Hello students, I welcome you all once again to the e-learning sessions of automobile engineering. Myself Hardik Shah and today we are discussing about the different topics in the subject of automotive electricals and electronics. Okay, we have already started a new chapter on the engine sensors and its engine management system. Okay, so today we will discuss the engine management system in detail. Okay, I hope you will see this video till the end to completely understand this topic and gain your skills in automobile engineering. I also request you to note down any queries which arises during the lecture and ask me it in comment section. So I will try to solve all the queries as soon as possible. So now let's start our today's video. So what is engine management system that is EMS. Okay, so EMS is actually stands for engine management system which consists of the wide range of electronic and electrical components. Okay, such as sensors, relays, actuators and engine control unit. Okay, they work together to provide the engine management system with the vital data parameters. Okay, these are essential for the governing various engine functions effectively. Furthermore, the engine management system is incorporated in a modern day engine technologies. Okay, now this includes MPFI, GDI systems and in petrol engines and the CRDI systems in a diesel engine for the improved performance of the engine. Okay, so there are various types of EMS that is engine management system. First is ECM that is engine control modules, thereafter PCM powertrain control module, TCM transmission control module, EBCM that is electronic brake control module, CCM central control module, CTM central timing module, GEM general electronic module, thereafter BCM body control module, thereafter SCM suspension control module, thereafter SCU speed control units and thereafter TCU that is telematic control units. Okay, these are also called sometimes the types of ECU also. Okay, so what do you mean by this ECU? The ECU term may be used to refer the engine's control unit. However, the ECU also refers to electronic control unit also. Okay, which is the component of the any automotive mechatronic systems, not just for the control of the engine. Okay, but also for the other measurements. So in automotive industry, the term ECU often refers to engine control unit and engine control module that is ECM. So if this unit controls both an engine and transmissions, it is also often called PCM that is powertrain control module, which is actually combination of both. Okay. So for this purpose, we will discuss the ECU that is the engine control unit. Okay. So with the vehicles having the multiple ECU, they are actually divided on what task they are actually performing. Okay, so we have also discussed, we have seen all the types. So let's discuss some of these types. Okay, first is engine control module. So with its sensors, the ECM ensures the amount of fuel and ignition timing, which is necessary to get the most power and economy out of the engine. Okay, thereafter brake control module. So used in a vehicles with a ABS, the BCM makes sure that wheels are not skidding and determine what, when to trigger the braking and let go of the brakes to ensure the wheels are not lock up. Okay, which gives the perfect traction. Thereafter, transmission control module. So it is used on an automatic vehicle. The transmission control module ensures to get the smoothest shifting as possible by the accessing the engine's RPM and acceleration of the car. Thereafter, telematic control module TCMs. So another way which is the same that is the TCU ensures the car onboard services which are up and running. It controls the satellite navigation, GPS and internet and phone connectivity of the vehicle to ensure the vehicle's telematics. Okay. Thereafter suspension control module. So present in a car with an active suspension system, the SCM ensures the correct ride height and optimal changes to the sus uh, suspension depending on the driving conditions. Okay, so what does this ECU actually do? So fundamentally the engine ECU controls the injection of the fuel and in a petrol engine the timing of the spark to ignite it. 
it also determines the position of the engine's internals using the crankshaft position sensor so that the injector and the ignition systems are activated precisely at the correct timing okay so while this sounds like something that can be done mechanically there is now a bit more to it than that okay so a internal combustion engine is essentially a big air pump that powers itself using the fuel so as the air is sucked inside it the enough fuel has to be provided to create the power to sustain the engine's operation while having the useful amount which is left over to uh, uh, propel the car when it is required okay so these combinations of the air and the fuel is actually called mixture okay so to uh, too much mixture and uh, uh, engine will be or uh, the full throttle too little and engine will not be able to produce the power okay so not only the amount of mixture is important but the ratio of that mixture that is air fuel ratio is also need to be correct okay now too much fuel and too little oxygen and uh, the combustion is dirty and wasteful okay it will be abnormal so too little fuel and too much oxygen makes the combustion slow and weak so engines used to have this mixture quantity and the ratio control entirely by the mechanical metering device which is called carburetor which was little more than the collection of the fixed diameter hose that you can say jets okay through which the engine suck all the fuels okay now with the demands of the modern vehicles which is focusing on the fuel efficiency and economy okay and also for the lower emissions the mixture must be more tightly controlled okay so carburetor cannot work everywhere so the only way to meet this strict requirement to hand over the control of the engine to the ecu that is electronic control engine unit okay so the ecu has the job of controlling the fuel injection ignition and the ancillaries of the engine which is using digitally stored equations and numeric tables okay rather than we are doing it mechanically or analog means okay so precise fuel management is also required so the ecu has to deal with many variables when deciding the correct mixture ratio okay engine demand thereafter engine coolant temperature thereafter air temperature fuel temperature fuel quality fuel quantity wearing filter restrictions thereafter air pressure engine pumping efficiency etc etc okay so this requires number of sensors to measure such variables and apply them to logic in a programming of the ecu to determine how to correctly compensate for them okay so an increase in a engine's demand such as accelerating or throttling will require an increase in the overall quantity of the mixture now because of the combustion characteristics of the fuels in a use it also requires the change in the ratio of this mixture so when you press the accelerator accelerator pedal your throttle flap will open to allow more air in the engine so the increase in the air flow of the engine is measured by the mass air flow sensor so the ecu can change the amount of fuel that is injected keeping the mixture ratio within the limits as per our requirement okay it does not stop there for best power levels and safe combustion the ecu must change the ratio of the mixture and inject more fuel under the full throttle condition then it is actually required during the cruising okay it is called rich mixture okay so a fueling strategy or a fault that results in the less than normal quantity of the fuel being injected will result in a lean mixture so in addition to calculating the fueling basic uh, based on the driver's demand temperature has a considerable part to play the equations which are used inside it okay now since the petrol is injected as a liquid evaporation has to occur before it will actually combust okay so in the hot engine this is easy to manage but in a cold engine the liquid is less likely to evap vaporize and more fuel must be injected to keep the mixture ratio within the correct range of the combustion okay so because of the strict emissions uh, regulations now uh, there are many other systems on an engine that helps to reduce the fuel consumption and environmental impact on the car okay this devices actually also includes egr that is exhaust gas recirculation 
thereafter catalytic converter thereafter a selective catalytic reduction exhaust okay thereafter uh, air injection reaction air thereafter diesel particulate filter dpf thereafter uh, fuel stratifications exhaust additive injections okay thereafter evaporative emission control evap thereafter turbocharging and supercharging methods also thereafter uh, hybrid powertrain systems thereafter a uh, variable val uh, uh, valtrain mechanisms that is the vtec and vvtec okay thereafter variable intake control also okay so each of these systems affect engine's operation in a same way and as a consequence need to be under full control of the ecu okay so how does this ecu works let's see in very brief so an ecu is often referred to the brain of the engine as we discuss so it is essentially a computer a switching system and a power management system in very small case okay so to perform even on a basic level it has to incorporate four different area of the operation so which are these four different areas first is input this typically includes temperature and pressure sensors on off signals and data from the other modules within the vehicle and is how an ecu collect the information which is need to take the decisions okay now let's see the example that we can say that a coolant temperature sensor or you can say accelerator pedal position sensor okay so request from the anti lock braking system that is also one type of sensor module okay it can also be considered such as for the application of the traction control also okay so these are all the input devices okay that is sensors thereafter processing so it will actually process all the data so once the data has been collected by the ecu the processor must determine the output specification such as fuel injector pulse width as directed by the software stored inside the unit okay so the processor not only reads the software to decide the appropriate output it actually also records its own information such as uh, learned mixtures adjustments and mileage of the car so behavior of your car okay thereafter output so the ecu can then perform the action on the engine allowing the correct amount of power to control all the actuators precisely which is taken the data from the processor okay this can include the controlling of the fuel injector pulse width exit timing of the ignition system opening of the electronic throttle body or you can say activation of the radiator cooling fan and deactivation of it okay so this was the output thereafter power management okay so the ecu has many internal power requirements for the hundreds of internal components to function correctly okay so in addition to this in order for the many sensors and actuators to work perfectly the correct voltage has to be supplied by the ecu to components around the car okay and this could be just a steady 5 volt for the different sensors or you can say 200 volts for the fuel injector circuits okay so not only does the voltage have to correct but some outputs have to handle the ampere correction also like 30 amperes and etc okay which is normally creates a lot of heat so the thermal management system is also the key part of this ecu system okay so this was all about the ecu inside the engine so that's it in today's video we have discussed about the ecu and different types of ecu and how it is working therefore if you have any more to know or have any specific query please let me know i will surely try to respond as soon as possible i hope you like this video thank you so much stay tuned goodbye